All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. And <clears throat> been working uh, last night and a little bit tonight trying to finish up on my little nuke boxes that I was building. And I got a little carried away. And what began as a simple, small nuke box has become a much, much more complicated build. And uh, you can see it, guys. I mean, it, it's, it has grown immensely from my original uh, intentions and my original design, but it's gonna be something pretty cool. It's one of those laser projects that kind of crosses over into my honeybee world, and I think it's cool. So stick around. I'm going to show you what I've done with this thing and the different configurations that it has and kind of show you what I'm working with. waiver guys okay this thing is not intended to replace a beehive okay this was basically my my version of a nuke box uh when you order bees or you buy a new uh hive of bees a lot of times they'll come in a little cardboard box and uh, you're supposed to get them started in that move them into something different well i didn't want to go buying you know these nuke boxes and having to spend money on either cardboard or just some cheap wooden ones, even though I can make wooden ones. I got wood sitting around, got some leftover plywood. I could make them out of wood, but that wasn't challenging enough for me. So I wanted to make them with a laser. Uh, now you'll notice my version one, this is the original box that I built. And there were some several things that I kind of wanted to change on it. I wanted to increase the size of the entry hole. Uh, the, the little A-frame or, you know, end frame, I guess you could say that I had in there. That worked, but I kind of wanted to make it look a little more laser worked and a little more laser cut. So I had on the second version, I've actually got a piece that snaps in here that's on the inside that replaces that, that little uh, loop there. Uh, it's a lot smaller. It does add a few more cracks to the box, but I think it adds some good character with the uh, little notches there. Uh, and I, I made them to where they do lock together. As you can see, uh, it's pretty pretty tight fit. And the way that I did that is, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I left a few of the teeth basically on the bottom. And I've added a bottom plate to these. And the teeth kind of protrude upward to where they will lock into the box that's on top of them. And I'll move you a little closer where you can see what's going on here. So what I've got is I've got two on this end. Both ends have two uh, little small, uh, basically, pieces of wood that protrude up. And the way that works is, uh oh, I've got jars in here. Let me pop this top off. I just want to get these jars out. The way that works is the bottom of each uh, panel is got corresponding holes that allow the little feeder jars. So what I did with this one, this is just a cover for the, this is a bottom that you can put on there for feeders. If you're not going to use feeders, you can substitute this for a solid bottom. Uh, this is the, the solid, solid bottom here. Uh, when you, when you put it together, you just have to take, instead of using the one for the feeders, use the one for the bottoms. And I also have a feeder top. So if you're wanting to feed your hive and say you've got a double hive like this, this snaps up here where the uh, top goes. And like I said, some of this, it gets a little out of pitch sometimes with this thinner material and you have to make sure those holes are lined up. So once you put that on there, then you've got your, uh, your jars for your feed. And basically they just snap in this little hole here. It's a little tight so that it doesn't blow over. There we go. And of course the jars have the holes so the bees can drink the, uh, sugar water. But that would be the way that typically, that was a, that would be as big as I would make one. Uh, and the only reason I would do that is if it was one of those situations where you had a hive that you had split and maybe they were getting a little big for you. Uh, I, I'm gonna recommend that if you do make this out of this thin plywood, it needs to be painted really well, sealed up or kept out of the weather. Uh, I don't know how well this Luan is going to hold up. I am going to be testing one. Hopefully this weekend I'm going to do a split with my bees if they've got any queen cells. And I'll be finding out how well they work and uh, how weatherproof they are. But this is the feeder top. And of course if you're not going to be feeding them, you don't need a feeder top. So you can pop this top here off. 
and you can put a solid top on there. Uh, the solid top, like I said, I did away with a bunch of the uh, a bunch of the little locks because it wasn't ne really necessary to hold it together. And uh, the bees will propolize, which is kind of like a little wax that they spit out, and they basically caulk around the edge of this. So if you put too much on here, it's going to be harder to get off. So I did I did limit the number of uh, tabs that hold the top on. If you live in a you know certain areas, you may want to put something on top of it to uh, to cover it to keep the rain out if it's going to be outside. One thing that a lot of beekeepers around here do is they just have a piece of tin or a piece of metal, set it on top of it with some weight uh, to keep them from getting rained on, and that kind of saves your box uh, even if you're just using a regular hive. We're gonna take a piece of flashing, and you could actually take a piece of flashing and glue to the top of this and kind of have a metal roof on it. But uh, these two, like I said, you can see that these, these, are, these are together currently, uh, but you can take, let me take the, pop the top off of this. When you take the top out, you can take the frames out individually, uh, but if you're using this as like a, so if you're using this as a honey super, which I don't think many people would, but who knows, I got carried away. Uh, you can actually dislodge this from the bottom and now you've got your honey super off which I did create a queen excluder bottom for the boxes as well and what I did is I took one of my metal queen excluders that I bought commercially and basically mimicked it with wood and a burn file and what it is is the queen is significantly larger than the worker bees and so she's not able to squeeze through these holes to get to the frames in the top only the worker bees who produce honey will be able to make it through the holes. And so she is kind of trapped in the lower half. And so the lower half is gonna be where she's gonna lay the eggs and the brood are gonna be uh, contained. And then the honey will be only accessible to the workers and the workers are the ones responsible for producing honey. So if you only needed this part, which is the way I designed it was basically for, for this to be a nuke. For this to be a brand new hive, a, a split, a caught swarm, or whatever, and you just put the top on here, and you got your bees, all right? So, if you do put bees in here, and let's say, you know, bees been in there for a while, and uh, they're starting to expand, and you don't have a box ready, or don't have a hive ready, that's why I decided I'd go ahead and make it to where you could, in fact, take one of these one of the other boxes like i said this has got the feeder bottom uh, i also built like a pass through which is basically okay. now <laughs> i can show you this is the bottom that goes on there if you don't want to use the queen excluder uh, and the bottoms will actually stay in place and kind of show you how the uh how the stackable system works i've got like i said i've got two two tabs here and then two on each end so i've got a total of eight tabs that kind of lock into this bottom piece after it, the sides are put on and kind of hold it in place. So there's that. But the only thing is if you're not gonna stack them like that, of course, you're gonna have to put a door on the front of it that has the entryway. Uh, but that's as simple as cutting another file with the door with the entryway and snapping it on there. Uh, and that's actually what I'm gonna do uh, once I get these put together, because I really don't see doing any feeding uh, in a nuke just yet uh, if it was early spring and there wasn't any resources out maybe but I just went ahead and built all the attachments just in case I did decide while I was in the uh, making mood uh, but but this is the little tabs that I upgraded from the little J clamps or J shaped pieces and they basically go in through the uh, the notches there and just snap in really snug now this design i built it for me and i built it specifically for this 4.9 millimeter material uh some of these sheets are 4.7 some of them are 4.9 but for the most part it's you know four and a half between four and a half and five millimeter material now if you did get this plan you know light burn does allow you to resize things but that's not something that i can uh, i can't guarantee that works uh, i haven't really used it a whole lot all right, guys, before I sign off, there was one more thing that I failed to mention, uh, and I didn't realize it until I was breaking my boxes down and putting them into the single nuke format, and that is the front door. Uh, I did kind of change up the design on that. 
Uh, I've got a little little porch landing there. I had a couple of people expressed concern that the bees wouldn't have anywhere to land, which as long as you got it sitting on something flat, it wouldn't matter. But I figured, what the heck, I go ahead and put it on there. But this is the intended manner of use for these. Uh, this is a single, it's solid all the way around. I do have the easy off top with the eight little tabs that hold it on. Uh, this has the uh, little front porch on there. Uh, and it's basically just tabbed in. You drive it in with a little rubber hammer, and once it's in there, it's, it's not going anywhere. Uh, the top, like I said, the top does come off easier than it did with the uh, pins all the way around, but I'll give you a look at the inside as well. Uh, you can see the tabs down in the bottom for the hole uh, right here at the door. Uh, and then I've got the, the two little pieces that the, the frames rest on. So. This is the intended use of it. This is the intended design. Uh, I got a little carried away with some of the accessorizing and adding parts to it, but I will be, as soon as I can get my bees ready, uh, assuming that they're, you know, it's springtime and I don't want them to swarm. So as soon as I find some queen cups in there and some activity to indicate that they may be about to swarm on me, I'm gonna be testing one of these guys out and just see how well it works. Uh, pretty sure it'll work. Me and my bee friends have looked at them, and it's the same principle as the stuff that you can buy online. Same principle as the stuff that they sell at the local bee stores. It's just laser cut, a little uh, more affordable for somebody like myself that has a laser. And it was my first project with the, the big machine with the longer uh, axis. So I have four nuke boxes now and uh, that should be enough to get me through the spring. I've got a couple of friends that might be interested in one. Uh, of course, you can see the evolution. This was my very first one. This is kind of the beta. Uh, then I moved over to this design, added the, uh, at, removed a lot of the notches in the top, added the stackability to them, and then it just evolved from there. And this is the final product right here. Uh, it's stackable, has the interchangeable pieces, has a little bee porch and I moved the uh, entrance up and uh, got it to just to the edge of the porch there. So that's gonna be, that's gonna be the final product guys, right there. All right guys, couple of things about the build. Like I said, I built this for 4.9 millimeter uh, material. The holes are sized for 4.9 millimeter material with a little bit taken off for the kerf uh, to give it a little bit tighter fit. Cause I wanted these to be able to be put together you know, maybe bump with a rubber hammer to get them together, but once I got them together, I wanted them to stay that way unless you intentionally pull them apart. So it's a very snug fit at 4.9. 4.7 is probably gonna still be a pretty snug fit, but once you get down to around 4.5 millimeter material, you're probably gonna get a loose fit. So I strongly recommend 4.7 to 4.9 mat uh, millimeter material for these. Uh, like I said, I can't say, depending on your material, it may or may not hold up in the weather, depending on whether you paint it, whether you seal it, whether you spray it with, you know, whatever. Uh, where you put it, I would recommend, because it is thin plywood, and if it gets wet, it's probably not going to respond real well. I would try to keep these in the dry. Uh, if you can't, then definitely make sure you paint them. But if you buy the file, guys, <laughs> People are wanting me to put the file out there and I'm not against it, but if you buy the file, like I said, 4.7 to 4.9 millimeter material, and these things aren't intended to be out in the yard for years, okay? That's not what I built this for. These are temporary nukes for capturing swarms or starting out a new colony, stuff like that. So just know that and don't hold it against me if it doesn't work the way that you think it should because that's kind of the intentions that I had was basically for these to be used for you know a few weeks maybe a couple of months and then either vacated or you know thrown away or just cleaned up and reused depending on how you treat it where you put it if it gets wet you know that type of thing uh one thing that i'm going to try to do to mine is i'm going to try to get my fish cooker out and try to get my hands on enough beeswax that i can put these guys together and get them get them completely put together heat up some beeswax and then i want to dip them and beeswax and that'll do two things one it'll seal them up from the elements it'll make them completely sealed which i may have to turn around and add some air holes to them uh, but secondly it'll also make it easier for the bees to go inside the box and you know use that little bit of wax to to, to build out or whatnot so that's what i'm that's what i'm wanting to do to mine now whether i can or not who knows we'll see one final thing that i want to point out to you guys 
<clears throat> the longest cut on these is about 19 and three quarter inches as far as the material size. So if you don't have a long bodied machine, you're not gonna be able to cut this file. Okay, so you're gonna need something that is capable of cutting up to almost 20 inches long. So if you've got you know, any of the, the lengthened machines, you should be fine. Uh, it does take a lot of material uh, because these are big panels. And unless you've cut your material specifically for this, you're gonna waste a lot of wood. I did. Luckily, I'm gonna use this scraps on smaller projects and recycle it, but this was something I wanted to do. And my Luan is not that expensive anyway, so it cost me a couple of sheets, I can tell you that, because I got a nice little stack of leftovers over here. Uh, but I got the bugs worked out of it, I got what I wanted to do accomplished, and I'm happy about that. Because I love creating these files, I love making something. I couldn't find anything even rem remotely close to this on the internet. I mean, I've seen some little minis that, you know, are basically just decorations, but as far as a functioning beehive, I couldn't find one. So hey guys, I want to remind you, and I, I keep, you know, mentioning this, but I want to remind you, Sunday night, 7 p.m., myself and Steve from Ventari's Workshop, we do our live, and uh, it's always, you know, questions being asked and comments being made, you know, what's the latest and greatest equipment coming out, there uh, <clears throat> maybe a little insight on some new machines, so if you haven't got anything going on, just go ahead and go to our page and hit that, you know, button letting us know you're coming, and we'll see you Sunday night, 7 p.m. But that's going to be it for tonight, guys. And until next time, as always, be safe and have a good day.